not a good idea to be shooting in there. They could be putting holes into the side of the space station, which will cause it to leak down. It's crashing towards Earth because of the explosion. It would eventually re-enter, but it would take months, if not time. years, to come down. This looks almost exactly like the actual International Space Station, except they slapped a big US Air Force <laughs> name yeah. on the side of it. It doesn't have that. Hi, I'm Jerry Hudak. I'm an aerospace engineer. And I'm Colin Smith, also an aerospace engineer. And we're going to be watching Call of Duty Ghosts. Ready to check it out? I'm excited. All right, let's go. There's those, Odin. Those graphics look good. Maybe it's not us, but maybe like this will crash. So that spaceship is, I mean, it's based on the space shuttle. It's based right. on the shuttle, but it has like a weird curvy top. Also to looks it. like the the engines have like a flap like underneath. Is it like a re-entry? Yeah, like as it comes by, watch, look at the back, there's a bottom flap. Is that like a lifting surface? Oh yeah. Are the engines maybe retractable and you could, it's like a heat shield coming in? It makes sense to me. I mean, the normal shuttle didn't have that right. exactly, but it kind of makes sense. You might want to protect the engines against re-entry heating. It looks pretty similar to watching a video of people on the ISS or something like Although that. Although you wouldn't do that jump, right? This jump right here, you just kind of like... So you're going to be spurt. tethered to something, you're not gonna be jumping around. Do they use that the jetpack still that like isn't tethered? That's the one that like George Clooney uses in Gravity. So that does exist. Typically you're tethered and then as you move, you like move your tether from one to another. There's a famous photo of the jetpack one. Yeah. Like somebody's taking a photo of his buddy in the jetpack out of the window. There's like a really iconic photo of that, but I haven't seen that used in the last couple decades, I don't think. Typically the modules that go up there are all have designed ways to like traverse the, the outside of it, right? You can move along with certain, there are different like clipping points and kind of like a rock climbing wall, but for space so that you can maneuver along it. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like rock climbing where you have two points of contact, so you like yeah. clip in here, clip so in here, and then like move this one before you take this one off. And then even all the tools that you have have to also be tethered so you don't lose those. Though there is the one where there's like the arm, they like put their feet, they get mm. on like the arm and move over. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of neat features that exist that you wouldn't think of tools on space. They've either thought of ahead of time or they've like learned the hard way. They've gone up there. I think the first one to go outside the capsule, Gene Cernan. If you watch the video of it and hear like the audio, he like struggles really hard to like just exist. They like just like how to move your body. So they do a lot of practice ahead of time and that has helped them since then. But in the early days they were just like, I don't know, go try it, I guess. Check it out. They didn't know anything about back space then. in the early days. When they got back, they had to quarantine to make sure they didn't have a space virus or something like that. Yeah. And there was all sorts of, we didn't know anything. We still don't. We knew a lot less back then. Yeah. This looks almost exactly like the actual International Space Station, except they slapped a big US Air Force <laughs> name yeah. on the side of it, it doesn't have that. Other than that, it's almost a carbon copy. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. There's the Canada arm, so some spaceships that approach can't actually dock, so they get nearby, and then it kind of like elephant trunks them in, it hooks up to them, and then kind of scoops them into the, the node that they need to, to birth with. And the um, Canada arm's used for other stuff too, like if there's oh yeah. external payloads, or yeah. if it needs to do inspections of a vehicle, all sorts of stuff. Now that hatch opening would not, they just, you see it just open. <laughs> it just, <laughs> so I'm also realizing the lighting, it's kind of bright everywhere, which in space it's more very, very bright or very dark, so. Uh, yeah, but for the game, right, you want to be able to see. You want to be able to see so stuff. So I think that makes sense. The spacesuits will have like light on the helmet so they can see when they are on like the darker sides. The spacesuit looks pretty accurate, I would say. And that tubing looks accurate for ventilation. They even have like zip tie tie off points on yeah, that one. This <laughs> looks like pretty pretty realistic. There are those handholds on the side. Looks like a real hatch. Lots of anodize. Lots of anodize. Hey, Baker. And then it just open? Oh, would open it, like garage door open. Yeah. yeah, it was also very fast. Things are pretty yeah. slow. Oh, Whoa, <laughs> what just happened? Uh-oh, this is not good. Okay, uh, this is a nightmare if you're on the actual ISS. The markings around the hatch, so aft and forward, those are, that's accurate. And the patches, so they have the patches for all the different missions. That's so. what you're concerned about right now? Yep. This guy just got like... Yeah, yeah, we're There's we're a lot fine. of blood, Jerry. Oh, oh we just threw that, a, Oh, break out the guns. This must Wait. be the Russian guns. Oh, 
that's not... Also, not a good idea to be shooting in there, right? No. Same as, like, on an airplane. <laughs> they could be putting holes into the side of the space station, which will cause it to leak down. So I feel like that may come not, into play, not but... Not smart. Yeah, you so? definitely don't. You think we're going to lose pressure and have to abandon? I think so. Okay, so how do we know who's bad and who's good here? The, like, off-white space off suits are... Off-white's bad. Giant window, yeah. So that, while that is cool, there is a cupola yes. that has a lot of windows in it, but it does not look like that. Hey, we're right over That's LA again, see? There's uh, Baja, yeah. California. It's all coming together. Well, on the ISS, you do have what they call a life raft, which is a vehicle that sits there ready to help you escape, so. There's a massive explosion. And then we get sucked out? Is that what's happening? Yeah. Yeah, we get sucked out. So... Well, you'd be pushed out, technically, right? You'd be pushed out a little bit, but I don't think, like, the density of the gas in the space station, the mass of that gas isn't very high. You know, so I don't, I don't know if you'd be sucked out exactly like that. Back to our question about can you fire a gun in space? Yeah. I think this would work just fine. I think you could do this. I think you should be worried about other things right now, right? Like that looks bad. Trying to grab onto Odin here. So Odin is also U.S. Air yeah. Force. Ooh. Yeah. So far, this is, <laughs> I mean, pretty accurate. There are thrusters on the top of this. It's like ventilation. Maybe this is a radiator panel. Okay, so oh. her like little pack thrusters are going off crazy, which. If you had oh, what are you doing? some kind of feedback system that was trying to keep you stable, the thrusters might go off like that. So they're making it look like it's crashing towards Earth because of the explosion. It would just be an explosion and cause a bunch of particulate in space. It would eventually re-enter, but it would take months, if not time. years, to, looks, to come down. Right. Yeah. It looks like they're kind of playing that in fast motion, though. Like. That image of how it's kind of lighting up is pretty accurate, but it's just happening in also 10 times speed or 100 times speed. We're like re-entering. The re-entry is way too fast. Also, since we saw Los Angeles below, I think they think just like, it just straight Drops down. like a rock. Yeah. <laughs> and really, it would end up in the ocean somewhere. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize when you're in orbit, you're going very fast sideways. So if LA is right below you, when that explosion happens, you're going to be going sideways at 17,000 miles per hour. You're not going to fall down into LA. You know, like the space station orbits every, what, 90 minutes around the Earth? So now it's, oh, there's just more pieces coming in as like asteroids. If something did re-enter the atmosphere, like they showed, probably most of it would burn up in the atmosphere, you may be left with a few very small pieces of extremely dense metals or something like that, but... Wasn't it Mir came back in like kind of bigger pieces and then Taco Bell put a target out in the ocean? <laughs> and if it hit the target, like everyone got like free tacos? Taco Bell yeah. for life. It seems a little exaggerated to me. There's like huge chunks coming in. Nobody's supposed to be developing weapons in space. Everybody signed a lot of treaties saying we're not. Same with like claiming land. You can't like go to the moon and claim it for a country. Yeah, like this is new America on the moon. Yeah. Although we did put a bunch of flags up there, but. We did, it's like, I mean, go take them down. So they have done ground to space weapons, said that it was for a satellite that they wanted to break up so that it would re-enter better. And it was really bad because now there's like tens of thousands of teeny pieces of satellite right. orbiting. Well, they should come back and burn up, that was the... It's really dangerous to have all of that moving debris in space, so... Yeah. Paint flecks and things can really cause problems, but they're too small to actually be able to track, so that's where you really get in trouble. The bigger pieces you can see coming, and they can map them out, right, and then they can adjust, but the smaller ones are the ones that are the, the issue. Yeah, like those are coming in hot. <laughs> like, look, a truck, we launch a, a truck, truck in the air. One flying. Yeah. I don't know. It's possible, but I think a lot of stuff that we put up in space, we think about reentry actually, when we design it. So things are purposefully designed to not come back and do this. Uh, for example, most satellites have to be designed so that they burn up in the atmosphere when they deorbit. And satellites also are supposed to carry extra propellant so they can deorbit to get them to start that process quicker. And once you get low enough, the atmosphere thickening takes over and then it accelerates that. 
I thought it was pretty realistic. I mean, the graphics look good on that. And then a lot of the, the ISS stuff, I mean, the cargo being stored in those, you know, those are the same kind of bags that are up there with the straps. And a lot of that looks like they definitely did some, some research and, and modeled it after it. Yeah, same kind of tubing, same kind of hatches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought it was pretty accurate. Certainly the graphics were great. They definitely looked at some pictures and videos of actual work on the space station when they did this one. It was pretty good. If you liked what you saw, please check out Gameology's YouTube channel and Facebook pages. I would Colin. love to give Jerry shit. Colin, Colin, you will never be an astronaut if you cannot climb that ladder. <laughs> like pipe in my audio and the hit just so you can hear me. Uh, Colin, uh, bad news. The oxygen is running out. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs>